Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Outstanding Watch program. What else must happen in this nation that we all realize that we are encountering a disaster of unparalleled proportions? What else must happen that we as a nation wake up to the fact that those who have been entrusted with solving the financial situation we are in don't seem to have a clue as to how to do it? What else must happen that we realize that our debacle will be of an inevitable consequence unless we change course immediately? In case you think that my statements are too harsh, too bold, too strong, let me read to you what happened this week from the national and international press. Here is an article by Bloomberg, which was published on November 24. The U.S. government is prepared to lend more than $7.4 trillion on behalf of American taxpayers. That's on your and on my behalf or half the value of everything produced in the nation last year. Why? To rescue the financial system. It goes on to say that the money that's been pledged is equivalent to $24,000 for every man, woman, and child in the country. It is nine times what the U.S. has spent so far on wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, these are astronomical figures you and I cannot even comprehend. And do we really believe for a moment that these astronomical figures will solve our financial disaster? But if that's not already bad enough, there's more coming. Notice this article from AFP, published on November 24. The U.S. government vowed Monday to safeguard the aiding economy after stepping in to guarantee over $300 billion in potential losses at Citigroup and pump $20 billion more into the financial giant. In other words, we are talking about a $306 billion guarantee. Now, here the people in New York objected. Reuters reported that there was quite frustration on the street that that move was taking place. And it says the frustration on the streets of New York was echoed by two of New York's major daily newspapers, the Wall Street Journal and the New York Post, which slammed the board of Citigroup on Tuesday with calls for all or many of its directors to quit or to be removed. The Post on Wednesday ran a series of letters from readers, all of them harshly criticizing the bailouts and Citigroup's former and current executives and board members. And I would say... It's the right reaction, but it's too little, too late. Because, my friends, the bailout plans have been a total, complete disaster. Nothing has worked. Money is being spent. Money is being pilfered by those who should have prevented this disaster from happening in the first place. I read newspaper articles saying nobody saw it coming. Nobody of our governmental leaders around the world saw it coming. Well, if that's the case, then there should not be in any position to lead. And that is a very mild assessment of the situation. Notice, though, what AFP reported on November 25. U.S. authorities launched fresh efforts Tuesday to unfreeze credit and limit the economic downturn with programs to buy up to $800 billion in mortgage and asset-backed securities. That's another $800 billion. Well, if that's not bad enough, Wait, what's still coming? Here's an article from the Associated Press, dated November 25. President-elect Barack Obama wants to project fiscal restraint even as his economic team assembles a massive recovery package. Economists from, a ro from across the political spectrum have put the size of an economic recovery package as high as $700 billion over two years. Now, if you add up all those figures, you have to realize this is absolutely insane. And so it appears that a spirit of insanity, a spirit of intoxication has swept this country. It's like the proverbial Titanic moving full steam ahead against this proverbial iceberg. 
And we are not only seeing now the tip of the iceberg, we are seeing pretty much part of the iceberg itself. And everybody on the street, every average person like you and me, would have to look at this and would have to say, we have to change course, we have to stop that, enough is enough. But you know, it looks like we are moving towards that iceberg with accelerated speed. One lone voice in the wilderness seems to be German Chancellor Angela Merkel who has recently warned that the process we are going through here in this country and in many countries around the world is just another way for clear-cut disaster in the future. She said we are printing cheap money. You see, and with that kind of a course of conduct, within five years, she said, we are going to face the same situation again. Well, I would disagree with her. I don't think it will take five years. Yes, but we are printing cheap money. The time will come where our lenders won't even tell us that they are not going to give us any further money because we are not able to even pay the interest back, the annual interest of all the debts we are accumu accumulating. I remember I saw, seen a one million Reichsmark bill which was issued after World War I. One million Reichsmark wasn't even good enough to pay for a piece of bread. That's how bad it can get. You see, my friends, the Bible warns us that we are facing tremendous uncertainties, tremendous disasters. The Bible compares our nation with a body. And it says that from the head to the foot, there is no soundness in that body. And the head is sick and the heart is faint. It could have said there is a spirit of intoxication where people trying to solve a problem and they have no clue as to how to do it. The head referring to the government. Of course, the rest of the body refers to the entire nation. And then we read in the book of Amos, in the fifth chapter, that it's like a person who tries to run away from a lion. And then he meets a bear. And he goes into a house for shelter and he puts his hand against the wall and a serpent will bite him. Isn't that an accurate description as to what we are facing right now? Because let me tell you, my friends, all that money which is being pilfered right now, which is being poured into some kind of bailout projects, who is going to pay for that? It's not going to be the governmental officials. It's not going to be those executives. I can guarantee you that. It's going to be you and me. It's going to be cutting important and necessary projects. It will have to do with raising taxes. Forget Medicare, forget Medi-Cal, forget Social Security, forget your pensions. That's where it's going to come from ultimately. Forget education. You see, but should we really sit idly by and see our leaders getting us into this morass of absolute disaster? What can be done? We need to turn to God as a nation. And we need to turn to God individually. And I'm talking about the God of the Bible. I'm talking about the God as he is revealed in the Old and the New Testaments. I'm not talking about just any God. Many people who profess to be Christians don't seem to care whether other people worship other gods. They think, well, as long as we are following the dictates of our hearts, that's good enough. It's not good enough in accordance to Scripture. There is only one way for salvation. There is only one way for help, even in physical problems. And that is if we turn to the God of the Bible, the Father who brought to this earth Jesus Christ, his Son, in order so that the world wouldn't perish, but that it could have even everlasting and eternal life. There is no way to God except through Jesus Christ. Now, many don't like that. In this country today, the approach is like, well, as long as you are quote-unquote religious, everything is going to be fine. It's not. We have turned our back on God. And even those who profess to believe in the true God of the Bible, do they really do what God tells us to do? If they did, how come we have discussions about abortion? How come we have discussions about same-sex marriages, fornication, adultery, worshiping God in a way which is not accepted by Him? Christ says you have to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And in doing that, you will follow the words of God in the Bible. Most people don't do that. And then we are complaining about the situation we are in. And we are complaining about our leadership who is running astray and leading us astray. Yes, they are. 
that we all are to be blamed. We all are to be called upon to wake up to what's happening and to turn, to repent, to use that biblical terminology. Most don't do it. Are you going to be willing to do it? Because God offers protection for those who are following him, even in times of financial disaster. Because that's coming. Several months ago I gave a program talking about whether the Great Depression is coming. That has been viewed by over 20,000 people by now. How come I could see it and our government leaders couldn't? You answer that question. It's because a spirit of intoxication is sweeping through this country, and we have to make sure that we are not going to become victim of it. Thanks very much for watching, and until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Stanley Watch